Okay, good morning, everyone. So we are getting closer to the Yom Tov of Hanukkah. So just to take a moment before we um, before we continue with uh, the blessings of the Shema. So we're at uh, we're at morning, Bacha. We're we're at uh, uh, page forty in the Nusachari Siddha, and it's the blessings before the Shema. But before we continue, I just wanted to, to, to mention a couple of things about davening. First of all, as we're coming towards um, uh, Hanukkah, and also um, last week in the, in the Shemona Esrei, in the Amida, we switched in the... Um, in the prayers where um, it changes in the winter, um, and that is on page 48, in the bracha, in the blessing where we ask Hashem to bless us um, this year, there are two options. We say, uh, Hashem bless, us, bless for us, Lord our God, this year, um, and all the varieties of its produce for good, then we say besain and bestow. And there's two options, either bracha, blessing, which we say in the summer, or tal or mata le bracha, um, dew and rain for blessing. And um, that we switched already to tell Omata Lebracha. So just a, 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 a mark, a notice about that. And Mitz Hashem, Thursday evening is the first night of Hanukkah. And um, Lord knows the world is ready for Hanukkah. We need all this additional light. And just to remind us all, that when we dove and when we pray, there are certain additions to our prayers. Um, one being in the Amida, in the si in the silent prayer, we add Yaale the Yavo, and that is um, that can be found. Um, sorry, we add the Al Hanisim after the Modim on page fifty one in the Amida. We add the al hanisim, the al hapurkon at the bottom of the page in the gray box. And we thank you for the miracles, for the redemption, for the mighty deeds, and so on. And then the prayer continues. And on the right side, it, we say for Hanukkah. So the left is for Purim. The introductory part, the al hanisim, we recite both on Hanukkah and on Purim. So being Hanukkah, we will add bimei matis yahu in the days of Matis Yahu. Emit Hashem, please God, we'll look at this prayer um, on Hanukkah. This coming Tuesday, we will, we will take a look at this prayer, but just so that you can add that. And we also recite the Hallel, um, which we are currently in, in our Tehillim class on Monday mornings, the Hallel, are taken from the verses of Hallel are taken from Tehillim for the most part. And um, and so we add Hallel every day of Hanukkah. We say the Hallel in, in its entirety. And that is found on page 307, the beautiful verses of praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu um in the halal in addition just to remember when we wash for bread and then we do the birchat amazon we say the grace after meals after eating bread we also add the al hanisim prayer into the into the grace after meals and um that is found on page 90. so grace after meals is page 90 and at the bottom of the page in the gray box, there is uh, the addition 
of Al Hanisim. That's in the Nosachari Sidur. In, in the other Sidurim, you will see it. Um, and we should remember to include these prayers in, um, in our prayers during the holiday of Hanukkah. Mitz Hashem, please God, we will look at this prayer, but Al Hanisim and be made Matis Yahu um, on Hanukkah. So for now, we're going to continue looking at the morning prayers. And we are going up the ladder. We start with our blessings, with our more, well, we start with the Moda Ani before our feet even hit the ground. And, um, and then we go up the ladder. We, we thank Hashem for many things. We have verses of praise so that by the time we come to the Shema, the central prayer of a Jew and to the Amida, the highest prayer in the, in the davening, we have prepped ourselves. We have elevated ourselves so that we can come closer and closer to Hashem as we go on this journey of prayer every morning. So in the Nusachari Sidor, this will be on page 40. We started um, the, the Birchas Shema, the prayer leading up to the Shema. And the last prayer that we looked at last week, if you remember, we, um, we had done the, uh, in the first bracha of the Shema, we had gone through these beautiful uh, descriptions of HaKadosh Baruch Hu mentioning each word with one letter of the Aleph base. And now we are looking at Tisbarech. Tisbarech lanetzach surenu malkeinu v'goyaleinu barei kadoshim. Be eternally blessed, our rock, our king, and our redeemer, who creates holy beings. Praise be your name forever, our king, ministering angel, who creates ministering angels and whose ministering angels all stand in the heights of the universe and proclaim in awe aloud in unison the words of the living God and sovereign of the universe. All of them are beloved, beloved, all are pure, all are mighty, all are holy, and all perform the will of their maker with fear and awe, and all of them open their mouths in holiness and purity with song and melody, and bless and adore, glorify and revere, hallow and ascribe sovereignty to, and then it continues, the name of the almighty God, the great, powerful, and awe-inspiring king, holy is he. They all take upon themselves the yoke of heavenly kingship, one from the other, and with love grant permission to each other to sanctify their maker with joyous spirit, with pure speech and sacred melody, all exclaiming in unison with awe and declaring in reverence, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the Ophanim and the holy Chayot with a mighty sound rise toward the Srafim. Okay, so these are descriptions of different angels. And facing them offer praise and say, blessed be the glory of the Lord from it place. So we're going to stop over there. In this tefillah, in this prayer, as we continue along, and we're going to go into the meaning of this part of the prayers, the prayer describes the angels in heaven and how they praise Hashem, how they praise God, and it's based on a description from the book of Isaiah, 
in which Yeshayahu describes the uh, the angels. Now, it goes. On, we, we're going to go into this prayer to try and understand a little bit about what's going on up there in heaven and who are these angels and how do they conduct themselves and how do they praise Hashem. Um, why does this belong over here? Where, where, where does this come into the picture? It's interesting, actually, that we know that um, the sages tell us that the angels wait for us first to give praise to Hashem. And then only after we give praise to Hashem, do they praise Hashem. And um, when we're going to finish talking a little bit about these angels and how they praise Hashem and this beautiful symphony that takes place on a daily basis in heaven, perhaps it will spur us to hurry up a little bit in the morning because this beautiful choir doesn't take place until after our beautiful choir. So um, we should say they're interdependent. Obviously, Hashem loves our prayers if he's asking the angels to wait until we have finished our prayers. And, um, and, and this prayer, Kadosh, 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 this is a prayer actually that we say several times during the day. It's not just in the morning. So we say it here in the morning. Um, it's also recited during the repetition of the Amida when there's a minion in shul. And it's also part of the prayer of Uvalitzion. So we see the importance as we are going towards the Shema and how this is a, a, another step up the rung of, of the ladder. It also fits in here as we are talking, this bracha is the bracha of Yotze Ar. Before we talk about the Shema, um, which is our central prayer and belief system, it, it makes sense that we talk about the angels because that is where they are, um, that's their home, up in the Shemayim, up in, um, in the heavens. And, and thinking about this is very awe-inspiring. So it helps us to climb the rung of the ladder towards the Shema and ultimately to the, uh, to the Amida. So these angels, what are the angels called? An angel is a malach, a malach. A malach is a messenger. Uh, actually, last week in the parsha, the parsha was called Vayishlach, and the parsha began Vayishlach Yaakov Malachim, and Yaakov sent messengers. And if you had an opportunity to look at the parsha last week, there's a discussion: were these who were these messengers? And there are differences of opinion. Some say they were messengers of flesh and blood, human people, that Yaakov dispatched messengers to uh, see how the land lay with his brother Asaph, who was angry with him and who had wanted to kill him, which is why he had to leave Eretz Yisrael. And um, others are of the opinion that they are angels. So angels are called Malachim because they are messengers of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They are messengers of God. Angels, uh, now we're also angels of God. Actually, that was the, 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 not angels, messengers of God. That was the lesson that we started off with last week, how the Rebbe talks about the fact that every single one of us are emissaries. Vayishlach is the concept of sending out and that Hashem sends our neshamas, every single one of our neshamas, of our souls out for a purpose in this world. We're not called malachim, though. We are 
we we have freedom of choice a malach an angel doesn't have that freedom of choice their whole being and their whole existence they are always and constantly aware of their creation and the purpose of their creation and 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 why they were created there are many different kinds of angels of malachim um, some are created to do uh, to fulfill a mission and then they expire there are others who are created and continue because they have a mission uh, for example most of us have probably heard about the the angel michael michael gabriel gabriel those angels are angels that uh, um, were created and continue to have their mission and so they 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 last um forever but the chazal tell us that actually every single day hashem creates angels from the river of fire and um and that these angels sing shira they sing praises to hashem and once they've done that they um they expire so insofar as beings are concerned angels are of a very very high level we 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 and that's why we talk about them now they are celestial beings and as we are talking about the maoros the planets the lights the heavens um it makes it makes sense that um that we talk about them here and also there is much that we can learn from the way that they sing shira from the way that they sing praises to hashem and we're going to discover that as we look at these um at the at the meaning of these words carefully um So, Tisparach la Netzach Tsurenu Malkeinu Vagaelenu Borakadosh. And be eternally blessed, our Rock, our King, and our Redeemer who created holy beings. Praise be your name forever, our King, right? Who creates ministering angels and so on. So, um, Kadoshim, we said, Bore. Uh, Kadoshim, who creates holy beings. What are those holy beings? So this are the very um, lofty and high spiritual beings that are the closest to our Kadosh Baruch Hu, that are closest to the Shekhinah, to Hashem, and God's Shekhinah, God's light and presence dwells upon them at all times um and these are referred to by different names i'll just throw them out there so if you come upon them you will you will recognize they they are called galgal -gal, they are called kisse or ofanim different names ascribed to these um angels the second category mentioned over here yotse mesharsim mesharsim are the messengers um the ones that Hashem chooses to go out and to perform specific um, sp specific message message messages for Hashem, specific jobs that Hashem gives to the angels. Um, that's why we use this expression when somebody um, is is very kind or or does something special. We say you're an angel. Why do we say you're an angel? Why do we use that expression? Because an angel is a messenger. When, first of all, when we ourselves perform a kindness and we reach out to others and we are there for others, we should remember this. We are angels. We are messengers of Hashem. The Baal Shem Tov said, Right, this 
past week, we celebrated the Rosh Hashanah of Hasidus, the 19th and 20th of Kislev. The Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidus, said that an Ashama, a soul, could come down to this world and live a whole lifetime just to do a favor for another. That's a malach. That's a messenger. That is the shlichus. That is the job that Hashem gives to us. So um, we should think of that in terms of ourselves and certainly in terms of somebody else that does a favor for another. That when we are on the receiving end, that is a shaliach. That is the emissary of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the emissary of, uh, of God. Um, now the tefillah says, the prayer says, after the creating of the ministering angels, Kulam omdim barum olam, umashmim biyira yachad bakal. So what does that mean? They all stand in the heights of the universe and proclaim in awe, aloud in unison. Um, so when these angels stand before Hashem, they stand, the tefillah says, Bayira, with fear. Now, there are different words to describe fear. Yira is one of them. Pachad is another one. Um, we use specifically here the word Yira. What's the difference between Yira and Pachad? So Yira is a kind of fear that's felt from a distance, from afar. Pachad is when someone is close by. And um, and we use specifically this term to describe the awe of the angels. We specifically use the word yira and not pachad. One might think in, in human terms, when there is a, a servant of the king and that servant of the king is invited into the inner chambers of the king and remains there day after day after day, what tends to happen is that the servant of that king loses some of the, the, the fear of the king. They become used to being in the presence of the king. Not so with the ministering angels. As Actually, the closer that they are to Hashem, the greater becomes the Yira, the greater becomes the fear. Because the angel, the Malach, never forgets. We see a Malach, is, an angel is not like a, a human being. We have a Yetzirah, we have an ego, we have an, a, a, a good inclination and we have a, a not good inf inclination. A Malach doesn't have that. The malach is constantly aware of its insignificance and that its whole being and purpose is for the creation of God. And that's why specifically this word yira is used and not pachat. Now, the fact that we say this in our prayers and prayers are voda shabalev, it's service of the heart. We're not just pointing out something about an angel and it has nothing to do with each and every one of us. The, the, the purpose of reciting this tefillah, this prayer is to take in this idea and this message of working on our yiras Hashem, working on Really, the idea of humility is what which is that which will help us to achieve this yira, this fear of Hashem by recognizing. And that's why we start with the morning brachas, with the morning blessings. We start with gratitude. With, we start with acknowledging all of the gifts that Hashem has given to us. And we go on to recognize why we are the recipients of those gifts 
And this is to have a humbling effect on us so that we can work on approaching HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'yira with this kind of uh, awe, like the Malachim, like the angels. So, um, so these angels, even though they're celestial beings, but nevertheless, they are no less creations than, than, than we are. And where are they? They all stand in the loftiest part of the world and proclaim with fear. Um, and, and they perform the will of their maker. What Hashem wants them to do, that's what they do. There's a very beautiful um, thought on the way that this is expressed over here. It says... Um, that they all fulfill the will of their maker, right? With awe and with fear. This word, konam, the word, their maker, is in the singular. In the plural, it would be konehem, their maker. But this is the singular. And, and there's a beautiful message for us over here. And that is when we are united. Actually, tefillah, prayer, gives us this opportunity. Because what's tefillah? Tefillah is avodah shebalev. It's service of the heart. And we said that we're working at having humility with the recognition of who we are and what we have and why we are here, we are working to that level of bitter, of self-nullification. And when we daven, when we come before Hashem in this way, it has a most beautiful effect of unity, of uniting us all together. And that's why this this word konam is said in the singular so when 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 we come ba'ahava when we come with love to akadosh baruch Hu, then we cling to hashem and then we have this concept of unity whereas with the fear with the fear there's more of a distance and um and this is a very beautiful thought um, to take with us as we go on this journey. So they're all holy and they all come to Hashem and um, they fulfill the will of their maker with fear and awe. And then it says, And all of them open their mouths in holiness and purity. Now, what do they do when they open their mouths with holiness and purity? What are they saying? What are they doing with their mouths? Bashira or Zimra, with song and melody, or Mavarchim or Meshabchim, and bless and adore, or Mafarim or Maritzim, and glorify and revere, or Makdishim. And they um, make holy and ascribe sovereignty to the name of the Almighty King. So let's look a little bit over here about this idea of Shira and Zimra. They open their mouths with song and with him. Let's think about music, songs. Why do human beings enjoy music? Human, music has the ability to bring great calm to a person. Music has the ability to uplift a person. Music has the ability to remove a person from a very difficult 
Matzah Ruach, from a very bad state of being. What is it? Why do we enjoy music so much? And um, there are many, many scholars that talk about this. The Mava Yaba says that the reason we enjoy this so much is because when, before we came down to this world, Anashama, our soul was in Shamayim. It was in heaven. And what goes on in heaven? In heaven, there is this constant music. The angels are singing the most divine melodies to God every moment of every day. As we said before, there are certain angels that are created specifically to bring um, songs of praise in Shamayim in heaven. So while the neshama, while the soul was in heaven, it enjoyed this divine music. And we know that it's very hard for the neshama coming down into this world. In Pirkei Ovis, in Ethics of the Fathers, um, there's a teaching that says against our will, we are born against your will, you live against your will, you you die. Um, what, what is the meaning? If we didn't want to live, then why don't we want to go at the end of time? And, and it's the, the meaning of this Mishnah is that the neshama, the soul is a piece of Hashem. It's a piece of God. So where does it feel secure in its familiar surroundings, near Hashem, closer to Hashem, in more of a divine atmosphere? And yet, the neshama knows that it's coming down here for a purpose. And that's why at the end of life, against the will, the neshama is going back to Shemaim because the neshama understands that what it can accomplish in this world, when it's in a body, the mission, that doesn't happen in Shemaim. That doesn't happen in heaven. And maybe this can be a little bit of a, 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 a way to understand why Hashem loves our tefillahs, loves our prayers, and loves our praises, and wants us to sing Shira even before the angels in heaven. Because down here in this world, we have free choice. The presence of Hashem is hidden. So to God, when he sees that we sing praises to Hashem, that we choose good over the opposite, that we choose to recognize Hashem in this physical world, even though he is hidden, that's by choice. It's not because we've been pre-programmed to do that which in a way we have, because we have an ashama, we have a soul, but we have been given free choice. And because we have free choice, we have the ability to elevate this world and we have the ability to elevate ourselves. That's why human beings have legs. Legs is the concept of walking. We are called mahalech. We are the ones who walk. We make progress. We go from point A to point B. A malach, an angel, doesn't have that ability. By the way, that's why we, we stand with our feet together when we get to the Amida. We'll talk about that because we are in a, an angelic state, hopefully, by that point. And um, angels um, have one foot. Some of them have wings too. But um, it's human beings that have been given free choice and through that free choice, the ability to make progress, to improve. An angel cannot improve. An angel doesn't need to be to, to improve. That's not the job of, uh, of the angel. So this neshama, this soul, which is a piece of Hashem, when it comes down into the world, why is a baby soothed by singing? You sing a lullaby to a baby. You hum a tune to a baby. Why does it calm them down? Because that's what the neshama is used to hearing in Shamayim, 
in the heaven. So song, music has this great ability to touch the neshama, to touch the soul. And incidentally, it's not the topic we're talking about right now, but it is kind of because we are talking about music. That's why the music we expose ourselves to is important. If we're exposing ourselves to music and music has the ability to touch the neshama, actually music is the pen of the soul. So therefore, we want to put an imprint on our neshama that is holy, that comes from a holy source, from a, uh, a, a good place. So that's just a little bit about song and our connection to song. You know, song has the ability to really take a person to such a meditative state that they are no longer aware of their physical body. There's a famous Hasidic story. It's so famous, I can't even remember who the Hasid is, that needed to have, uh, I think it was dental work, and um, and they, they either couldn't have an anesthesia or didn't want to have an anesthesia, and they asked the dentist to give them a couple of minutes, and they, they sang a Hasidic, Nigun, a melody, that's a song without words. And when they were done, the dentist began the work and they did not feel any of the pain associated with dental work. And we all know what that is. So um, melody, and if you want to look further into melody, into Nigun, there's a whole website on Chabad.org where you can read more about it and you can listen to nigunim to melodies i see we have over here um a masha whose husband is very um into music music is very very powerful and now we can understand so that I put, can you hear me yes Connie, my yeah. this has this puts ear earphones on me so uh, for music, so I should freak out when I go there. That's one of the things, the techniques they do is the dentists now put earphones on you with music in it. And it definitely helps, you know, get you away from that, un, you know, un, 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 uncomfortable situation you're in. Right. So here is, here is, here is a, 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 a way of understanding why it is a source of comfort to us. Um, it's also a distraction, by the way, and when we can distract ourselves from from something, it's it has less of an intensity. But music is very, very powerful. Now it's interesting that the text says that they um, they open poschemes bihem bektusha of a tahara. They open their mouths with purity, with holiness and purity. Well, we've just said that the Malach is created by Hashem, created by God for a purpose. And that's what the Malach does. The Malach fulfills its purpose. So why does the verse have to specify that the ministering angels open their mouth, Bikdusha of Atahara, with holiness and with purity? So one, um, the, the, in the Siddha of the Shlaha Kaddish, he asked this question and um, he answers, um, citing Osios to Rabbi Akiva, and he says that um, there's an angel that stands at the bottom of the first heaven. Okay, there's seven heavens. So there's an angel that's, stands at the bottom of the first heaven, which is right adjacent to earth, where we find ourselves, and looks down at the behavior of all of us, at how we are behaving, what kind of deeds we are performing. When we perform a mitzvah, we create a holy angel, a holy malach. When uh, when, a, when a person transgresses, so an angel is 
created. Every deed we do creates an angel. And what kind of angel do we create when we do a deed that is not a good deed? We create a prosecuting angel. And that angel um, then goes up to heaven. So before the angel goes up to heaven, every angel comes before that guardian angel that's standing close to earth. And the angel asks the angel that's coming in to identify themselves. What kind of angel are you? And um, the angel describes either the mitzvah or the opposite and what specific sin was committed to create that angel. And then the prosecuting angel um, goes. But what happens is nothing happens in a vacuum. That area where the prosecuting angel described the sin that was committed, that area now becomes impure because of the description of the sin. And, um, and the ministering angels do not sing Shira. They do not sing their song of praise to Hashem until the environment has been matahir, has been purified however the purification up there goes there is a purification ritual that takes place like down here for example we either wash our hands or use a mikvah up in shamayim there is a, a ritual purification um and the shira doesn't take place until that has taken place and now we understand what it means when it says post chem spm victor shofa tahara they announce, they sing their song, Big Dusha Avatara, they have to prepare themselves. Why do they have to prepare themselves? They have to prepare themselves because of the actions that took place down here on this world. Now, if we say that to the negative, if we say that our actions down here, when they're negative, have a negative impact in Shamayim, in the heavens, how much more so can we say when we do a mitzvah, when we do something holy, when we do something positive in this world? Um, Connie, uh, yeah. if we, if, when we're to, when, when they, when the space has to be purified, can it also be purified by our tshuva? Well, everything we do, they can't. They're not going to wait for our tshuva. Because sometimes we're schleppers. It takes uh, a bit of time. But certainly, certainly our tshuva um, impacts not just this world, but the world to come. There's no question, no question about that. So then it, it continues and we say, And all of them accept upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. Um, right? This, this, in this paragraph, the name of the almighty God, the great powerful awe-inspiring king, holy is he, they all take upon themselves the yoke of heavenly kingship, one from the other. And with love grant permission one to the other to sanctify their maker with joyous spirit, with pure speech and with sacred melody, all exclaiming in unison with awe and declaring in reverence, right? And they go on to say, holy, holy, holy. So what is, let's look at this expression and all of them accept upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. How can Hashem's kingship be considered a yoke to angels? We know that an angel is created with this innate love for Hashem and an awe of Hashem. What does it mean? What's the meaning that they accept upon themselves the yoke of heaven? So um, it's brought down that 
that the way to understand this is, is as follows. Being that the angels don't have a Yetzirah, they don't have an evil inclination. All they aspire to, all they want to accomplish and achieve in their life is to be close to Hashem, is to praise Hashem. That's their whole purpose. Every single angel has their place. And not every angel is able to go to any place in Shamayim and to any level of closeness to Hashem, to God. And this is very difficult for the Malach. This is very difficult for the angel because the whole being of the angel is that connectedness to Hashem, that connectedness to God. So when this yoke, or Malchus Shemaim, the yoke of the kingship of heaven, is this is the meaning that what's the yoke? The yoke is that the angel has to only go so close to Hashem and no further. And that's difficult for the Malach. That's difficult for the angel. And yet, and yet, what does it say? They accept this yoke of heaven with love. So even though on the one hand, they want to go closer, it's difficult for them, that's the yoke. But at the same time, they're all about God. It's not about them. It's about Hashem. It's about God. And this, again, is something very important for us to wrap our minds around and our hearts around and understand. Because oftentimes, when it comes to our service of Hashem, we forget that it's about serving Hashem. And sometimes we go to that place where it's self-serving. I don't like this. Or I want to do this. And we forget that our relationship with Hashem, just as a relationship with a loved one, is about what does the loved one want? If it's self-serving, then it cannot endure. Because let's be honest, it's never enough. When it comes to what we want, it's never enough. But love is about giving. The word ahava in its root tells us what ahava is. Ahava, rather than being an emotion, ahava is a verb. And it comes from the word hav, which means to give. That we, in our love, first of all, for, for one another, it's about giving rather than about what we are receiving, even though receiving is an important part of love. We'll talk about that another time. Um, but giving, that is what love is about. So in our relationship with Hashem, where we have an area that we struggle with, this is a good thing to bring to help us move closer to Hashem in that area, to learn from the malachim, to learn from the angels that it's about what Hashem wants rather than what we want. Now we also see over here something super interesting. It says that uh, they all take upon themselves the yoke of the heavenly kingship. That they give permission, they grant permission to each other to sanctify their maker with joyous spirit. What is this all about? What is the meaning of they give permission one to the other? Why do they have to give permission? So um, one of the ways of understanding this 
is that um, we can learn a very basic principle about how Hashem created the world. The way, the way Hashem has created this world is that there is a constant chain of giving and receiving. So all the way from the Kisei HaKovod itself, from God himself, and each world and each heaven is all about giving and receiving, giving and receiving, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. So there's this constant, this constant activity of giving and receiving. So the physical world, this world is the lowest plane of existence. And so we receive as a result of all the giving and receiving that's come down from all the seven heavens until this, uh, until this world. So each receiver is receiving from the higher counterpart um, until it comes down below. And because of this setup, so this is what happens in Shamayim in heaven. The angels are also part of this chain of giving and receiving, giving and receiving. So this is the meaning. They are in this throw of giving and receiving. So before they sing Shira, there's this giving and receiving that takes place. It's important and vital to understand that we, just as in heaven, we need to prepare ourselves to receive. And in order to prepare ourselves to receive, we need to be humble. We have to have a state of humility. And um, because if we are not in a state of humility, we cannot receive. And if we cannot receive, we cannot give. And that's what it's all about. And that's why it says, they give permission one to the other. I remember also something many, many uh, years ago, Certain things you learn or you hear about in your younger years stick with you. And one of the lessons, I don't even remember who gave this lesson, but it, it was one of the things that stuck with me. Um, I, I, I think I was in high school when I learned this also about this, that they give permission one to another, that... Um, the malachim, what can we learn? Something very beautiful from the malachim, from the angels. They have one interest at heart. And that interest that they have at heart is that shira should be sung. Praise should be sung. God should be served. It doesn't make a difference to them how that happens because they have no ego. So when they see other malachim singing shira to Hashem or fulfilling the mission for which they were created, they accept that ba'ahava with love. Why? Because it warms their heart. They're happy that this is being accomplished. And so too, we down here in this earth, we said we're working, tefillah is about working on our egos. It's about becoming humbled. And this is a lesson that we can learn from the malachim, that we can learn from the angels, that we are delighted and happy when another person performs a mitzvah, because it's not about the good feeling that I have about me fulfilling the mitzvah, but rather it's the good feeling in the knowledge that Hashem is being served. 
And that's why sometimes, sometimes we, we can be in a situation where if we help somebody else to do a mitzvah, then we are not going to be able to do that mitzvah or we won't be able to do it to the full extent. But we can learn from the malachim. We can learn from the angels. We should be happy that the mitzvah is being performed. That, that it's not me that's doing the mitzvah. It's okay. We should be happy that somebody else is doing the mitzvah with love. They give permission one to the other to say Kedusha. They have so much love for Hashem. Their love for God is so complete that it doesn't matter to them. Who is the one that's saying it? Who is the one that's doing the mitzvah? You know, we have a Sahara. We have an evil inclination. It's hard for us. Sometimes our egos get in the way of something good happening and, and, and because of our ego, so the good doesn't take place. So this is a beautiful message um, from this tefillah. We're going to continue amidst Hashem um, learning. Next, we're going to take a little break next week from this, and we're going to look at the davening of Hanukkah. I want to wish everybody a joyous Hanukkah, a happy Hanukkah, um, we should continue to receive light from Hashem, from the Torah, from each other, so that we can go on to give light. In order to give, we need to be able to receive. And um, it should be a, a, a freilich Hanukkah. It should be a happy Hanukkah, a lichtige Hanukkah, a Hanukkah full of light. And it should be a Hanukkah ultimately where we have uh, miracles and uh, redemption and the light of Hashem should be recognized by all of us in the entire universe. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you, honey, Thank you. so much. Thursday Thank night, you. ladies, Thank Thursday you. night. Thursday night is the first program on Zoom which is the Hanukkah lighting at the mall, which has to take place on Zoom. And there's going to be a beautiful program together with it. So tune in and um, make sure you have some delicious uh, Hanukkah fare. If anybody, needs, <laughs> if anybody needs anything for Hanukkah, you need menorahs, you need uh, Hanukkah candles, you need latkes. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> 